This is Twit. This oh, uh, wow. the Remars conference was this week. Amazon does I this. I see dead people. Every, yeah, I hear them anyway. <laughs> I hear them. I hear I, them <laughs> every <laughs> year. They had Adam Savage was one of the speakers at Remars from, uh, of course, uh, the uh, MythBusters and I guess his new site, uh, the Tested. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the things Amazon announced did not sit well with me. But you know more than I do. What is Amazon proposing? Well, unfortunately, I was not in attendance for this conference for me to get the full picture. But from what from what I read and researched, <laughs> uh, Amazon is just putting that caveat. Amazon is proposing that you feed it your dead relative's voice. Let's just say it's your relative. It could be anybody. And then it's algor it's it's AI will repeat it back to you in just a few minutes of recording. You don't minutes. need. Like you Just could, if minutes. you wanted, I, it'd probably be easy for Amazon to simulate me. I've got a hundred, a thousand hours of recording available online, but you don't need that much. A grandma, a couple of minutes, nope. and then a echo. Voicemail. Just e a voicemail. Just a voicemail. And Echo could talk like her. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know which is worse. If it sounds exactly like her and she's passed, is that creepier than if it sounds sort of like her, but it's a robot? Which is worse? Right. Right. I had the same thought. And actually, so so my thought was, oh, God, is this something <laughs> that would inter interfere with the grieving process? Because because if you're like grieving. Daddy, person, grandma's not dead. She's in the echo. Yes. You. I mean, there's a reason you give a goldfish to a kid as their first. That's, oh boy, <laughs> is that true? This. People do that? I mean, you know. Time to learn about death, lesson. have a fish. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but this, <laughs> the thing is, this isn't a new idea. So actually in my Gizmodo article I brought up, there's this uh, toy from Takara Tomy, which is a big toy manufacturer in Japan. And they have a smart speaker that actually can imitate a parent's voice. So like a parent who is traveling a lot, a parent who maybe isn't at home for bedtime could like theoretically, you know, read a story to their kid, which is nice. But the idea of somebody deceased, first of all, it removes the consent from that deceased person uh, to exist in your life beyond the dead. Uh, and it also, again, my question was, how does this interfere with the actual grief process, which I am told by professionals in my life is a multi-step process. Sometimes it takes many, many, many years. Sometimes you never get over the death of somebody. So how will this affect that? But then there is the school of thought, and this is completely valid and fair from those who have lost loved ones, like a parent, let's say, that this is actually something that could be quite comforting. So there's a lot of it's just lot unknown of around yeah. this. Yeah. And there and there could be a lot of psychiatric work that you might need that's my later, fear and later that's, in life that's the first thing i thought about when i read about this i'm like okay how is this going to interfere with the psychology of a person and especially because we just got off the heels of that is ai human debate yeah. which is kind of still happening and so yeah. to kind of hear this it's like i don't know if i want to immortalize a dead one's voice but there are people out there who do so what do you do then <laughs> Wasn't there a Black Mirror episode where there was a robot or an android that was a uh, somebody's ex-wife or something had died? I dimly remember this. It's very Black Mirror, right? See, and then well, that scares me. What if somebody takes, like you said, Leo? What if somebody takes your voice from the internet and wants to just well, I'm have hoping that, they, continue that fact, parasocial relationship? I think it's a good possibility. It's already happened. And that yeah. I, I don't even know it, that I'm just a sim simulation. <laughs> I don't know. But, but it's if already I, being if used. I could, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to say my uh, my really good friend, Amanda Wynn Lee, she's a famous uh, voice actress, right? She did uh, even, uh, Evangelion. She did oh, wow. uh, Persona. She's she's like, if there's classic anime from uh, yeah, the 80s and 90s, she's in it. I have no doubt she did a Sailor Moon episode probably at some point. And, you know, she was talking about how her fear with this was it was going to commodify what she does and let people mm -hmm. use her 
her instantly recognizable uh, voice right off the bat without you know paying any rights. Um, I think that you know, for her, yeah. she's a professional. They would have to license her voice, wouldn't they? Yeah. Well, couldn't you so. just go in and 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 like in, like tech? Usually, when they're bringing out new technology, they try to like put their best foot forward. They don't put forward the dystopian stuff it's going to do. Mm -hmm. They put forward their best case for it. And you know, we start thinking like, how can you use this technology that? Uh, can basically take uh, someone's speech patterns and, and recreate it. Uh, like, okay, maybe having a loved one narrate to you, but I think a lot of the use cases are deep fakes. You know, it's revenge porn that may be false. Yeah. It's, That's another it's making matter. it harder yes. for people to make a living their voice acting professionals. I mean, well, there are also, a lot of these simplified. Yeah, I ahead. could call up and say, hey, it's Frank. Uh, could you uh, <laughs> wire me some money because I'm stuck here yeah. in memphis with the mobile blues again and well i mean you wouldn't no, I mean, know this is better. being used already in business email compromise you know we're, that's right we're already the boss calls. Seeing, yeah yeah we're already seeing this coming through where deep fakes are being used it's very early days yet but that you know it's getting worse but you know these kind of deep fake voices are being used in business email, business email compromise which cost I need to check the figures, but about five billion over the last five years. So you know, people are making a, a shed load of money about the, out out of this, and it's going to get worse because the money's there. As usual, Black Mirror was there first. Uh, Jason Howell tells me it was the first episode of season two called "Be <laughs> Right Back." After you, learning Jason. about a new service that lets people stay in touch with the deceased, a lonely, okay. grieving Martha reconnects with her late lover. And uh, mirth and merriment ensue. It's uh, it, well, uh, there's a, a short story by Roger Zelazny, um, famous science fiction Zelazny. author. Yeah, um, where yes, though you had gravestones with your uh, dead, you know, with the dead relative's voice and brain installed in them, and he was trying to do share options to get his. Uh, son, a dead person was trying to get his son to connect him with another dead widow. It was a deeply twisted and very, very funny story. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I'm, you know what? I so might download the, all these old Black Mirrors and watch them again because it's what a great series that was. Here's a, another episode from the same season. A failed comedian who voices a popular cartoon bear named Waldo finds himself mixing in politics when TV executives want Waldo to run for office. <laughs> Just like you said, Brianna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't it the Simpsons that I mean, a, a the Simpsons actually predicted President Trump. Yeah. And also, didn't they have Ralph as uh, running for president? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> um. So, I don't think we're very far off from this. I mean, I have Samuel L. Jackson in my Amazon Echo. I have Melissa McCarthy. Oh my God. In my Amazon Echo, I, I love asking Samuel for the weather because he swears up a blue streak. <laughs> and then you ask him, why do you swear so much? And his response is even more blue. It's hysterical. But well, you see, with, with the old uh, GPS Tom Tom things, John Cleese, there was a John Cleese Easter egg in there. Yeah. Where if you, t if you went against its, its navigation things enough times... John Cleese's voice would go saying, well, if you're not going to pay attention, I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've said this before, but I had a Tom Tom voice that was GLaDOS from Portal. And she'd always <laughs> ah, yes. tell you the wrong direction. She'd say turn left when you were supposed to turn right. She, it was complete chaos. It was terrible. Uh, yeah. That Tom Tom really was the first to do all of that stuff. It's very, I guess the technique at this point is they have the robotic voice and they can apply what they call prosody which is the mm -hmm. intonation the inflection the sound of a human's voice up on top of it and they've gotten i think pretty good at that to uh, to the point that one company approached me saying you know you never have to read any more commercials we can synthesize them all um and i said mm, well, that's an ethically no. very very <laughs> tissue thin area uh they're trying to they're literally trying to sell this to radio and tv uh Oof. that you know you just write the copy and then it'll read it in somebody else's voice and you're gonna yes. bet that some people with fewer issues on ethics are gonna do that as well yeah